All right, Mr. Kramer, um, can you just please shortly introduce uh, your company? Yes, uh, th first of all, thanks for the invitation and thanks for having us here. Um, I'm representing a Hurler Electrolyzer, um, a startup company uh, a little over two years old, located in Wismar, and we are concentrating on developing and producing stacks, uh, PEM stacks for um, electrolyzers. That's what we do. <laughs> okay, thanks. Or want to do. <laughs> Um, now, I found a, w a slogan on your website and it's called Green Hydrogen is the market of the future. So, uh, in Germany, we already have a kind of dense uh, natural gas grid. And for example, agricultural digester plants feed green methane, not hydrogen, but methane into this grid. Um, so, why do you think uh, hydrogen and not uh, green methane is the market of the future? Well, um, we are not only looking at the German market, first of all. Um, what we believe in is that there's a, a good application for decentralized uh, systems, so where we produce the hydrogen on-site from renewable energy. For instance, if you have excess power from uh, solar panels or from the wind park, uh, convert it into hydrogen to store it, uh, to store it and also to use it on local applications like your... Uh, forklifts or uh, your um, trucks, whatever you have on your premises, that's what we are primarily looking at. Okay, so uh, at places that are not close to such a, such a grid? Either not directly connected to the grid or uh, situations where you have access power. Uh, just this morning we talked to a um, a uh, manufacturer who has uh, three acres of um, uh, three hectare of solar panels on his new factory. He produces five megawatts a day, only uses one and a half to two megawatts in his production, and he's thinking about what can I do with the rest. So one of our systems could help to fuel, for instance, his intra-logistics fleet. Now, we can talk about that a bit later on. Now, uh, just to step into the topic, um, your PEM technology is called Prometheus, and with this name are also old Miss and uh, Legends connected. Uh, is that the reason why you choose that name, Prometheus? Well, first of all, a product name should be something to talk about, which I think Prometheus, uh, with Prometheus is the case. Uh, secondly, um, if you think about the Greek um, uh, myths, then um, Proetas changed the way people handled energy uh, because first they, they now have the fire and they can um, command the energy and I think that's the analogy that for us was uh, interesting to see that with the hydrogen production on site and the command of it, we also change a little bit the way people work with energy. <laughs> All right, and so uh, we talk about changes, and uh, we say uh, you say that your electrolyzers will be next generation electrolyzers. So, what's the difference to other or normal PEM stacks? Um, the key difference is, is not just one single thing that we change. We have a number of innovations which we combine in order to increase the uh, efficiency level which today is more or less around 70%. We are optimistic that with our uh, changes uh, in the stack, to the stack layout, to the way the membrane is constructed, we can bring that up to 75 and more percent in effectiveness. Okay, and uh, do you, uh, or can you introduce your product range maybe? You have different uh, products uh, or sizes? Yeah, we uh, looked at the market and um, our assumption is that we need three sizes, a small, a medium and a large uh, stack. Uh, the small one has uh, up to 76 uh, kilowatts of input and can produce uh, around 34 kilograms of hydrogen per, per day. Um, then we have a medium um, uh, stack plant uh, which goes to 150 kilograms per day. Uh, and then we also want to get into the market for the megawatts. Uh, so we have a 1.4 megawatt system in preparation, which then gives you 600 something kilograms per day in terms of hydrogen. Uh, that's uh, interesting because it's really similar to biogas uh, digester plants that are uh, producing uh, power. Also, the smallest ones start with uh, 75 uh, kilowatts power, and then the next level also 150. And the newest generation and the biggest plants also have uh, about one megawatt power. Um, now, can you give us for every of the size uh, maybe one example um, 
uh, on which use case this could be used. Maybe again uh, with the person you talked about, the, their uh, solar power plant on the roof. Yeah, that's, that would be the uh, typical application for the small or the medium one. Um, the, the large one is for the wind park uh, that needs to be um, t taken from the net. And um, I mean, the discussion here in Germany is about the subsidies that will uh, cease to be uh, paid as of next year. So people are looking at what do I do when I can't uh, sell or don't get compensated for the energy I produce. So hydrogen could be one option. And um, on the lower end of the spectrum, we are looking at uh, smaller logistics companies, for instance, that have three to four forklifts in there on their premises. That could be the application or the use case, uh, as we like to say, for the small one. And uh, like uh, with the small sized uh, with forklifts, are, for example, the forklifts then also um, be uh, uh, driven by uh, power from fuel cells, so do they also have to change then their... Absolutely, yeah, Absol right. absolutely. So the OEMs uh, are thinking about um, uh, fuel cells. Um, we are in contact with one of the leaders in the market who um, have a significant change in their product range coming up. So um, if the fuel cell is accepted in the market, they need the gas station on site to um, deliver the hydrogen and uh, um, a lot of um, industrial sites, you have access power, which then can be used uh, with our systems to produce the hydrogen directly there. Mm. And uh, I also found on the internet that uh, you are saying that the electrolyzer also can uh, uh, be driven with an uh, individual or with a fast-changing ch uh, load capacity. Um, so why is that important? I all the time thought uh, if you are investing in a technology, uh, the investment cost is uh, higher the lower the full load hours are in the, in the year. Uh, so why is this change of full load hours an important aspect for you? Well, it depends a bit um, how your energy is available. And if you look at um, wind or uh, sun energy, um, there's a time of day when it's available and there's another time of day when it's not available. And I think the uh, PAM uh, electrolyzer stacks that we are uh, designing, um, they're uh, better than other systems to adapt to the different loads that you have throughout the day. That's the idea behind it. Um, I found another description uh, that uh, you want to, or that you are saying that uh, with this new electrolyzer generation, it's possible to reduce the hydrogen production costs substantially. Um, how do you think this, uh, or uh, in fact, how is uh, this reduction possible? Well, the, um, uh, I mean, the um, uh, question how much does the uh, uh, hydrogen uh, cost at the end of the day partly depends on the technology and uh, to a large scale also on the uh, price of power, which we can't uh, really influence. But w we, what but we... We have surplus power. It should be zero priced. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, is, it, is it like this? I, depends a bit um, how you calculate it, right? I mean, um, from a financial perspective, you can say, yeah, it's only... Um, uh, border costs and it's therefore free, but if you look at the overall installation, then it's not quite correct to put it that way. Yeah. But uh, what are we looking at? We are looking at three components. One is increasing the efficiency of the stack. That's the first. Uh, the second is about production. Um, we are thinking about um, the, or our design is so that we can go to a serious production. Uh, so currently, if you only produce like 10 or 20 stacks per annum, then it's more or less manually. Um, but we, we um, foresee and hope for um, larger scale production. Uh, and the third element which we are looking at is really the size of the component. So um, at our booth, you can see our uh, models, uh, which are not working yet, but uh, which are um, the target design. So the sizes you see are the actual ones. And we believe that uh, today everybody's putting it in a 40 feet container, which is fine. But uh, tomorrow there will be other solutions. And we believe that space is an issue we should uh, take care of today as well. Okay, so size, efficiency, the zero production, and of course the the amount or, uh, that you have to pay for the electricity will not be zero. That's uh, what uh, everyone tells you here on the fair. Uh, uh, sev some concepts think that uh, surplus energy will be available, but I kind of doubt 
uh, that this surplus energy will be uh, yeah, for free. It's, I think this will not happen. And maybe, maybe one uh, addition, if you look at the economics, I mean, it's not only hydrogen that is produced, you also have heat, you have oxygen. And I think if you look at the overall system in a holistic way, then um, we probably have different calculations than just uh, looking at how much power comes in and how much hydrogen comes out at the end. Yeah, and yeah, so the um, heat generation is also a topic, of course, and it depends and the calculation, how much of the produced heat can really be used in the end. Um, all right, uh, let's talk about uh, um, costs maybe, or um, the price for the hydrogen. In 2017, the estimated cost for green hydrogen was around, f uh, or even more than five euro per kilogram. Uh, and then at the filling station, one kilogram of hydrogen now is um, about almost 10 euro per kilogram. Um, what price development do you expect? Well, I can't really f uh, foresee how the uh, development is on a quarterly or annual basis, but for sure the price needs to come down. Uh, what we believe that with four uh, euros per kilogram, uh, we are in a range where um, hydrogen will be more acceptable and uh, more a uh, widely used alternative. Um, so that is what we have in mind, that is what we are working against um, as of today. So this, so this is the goal to, to uh, bring the, pr the price for green hydrogen, and when I understand you right, down to four euro per kilogram. Exactly, that is our working assumption. Also when we look at product development, the innovations we bring, that's sort of the overall end goal we, are, we have in mind. Um, let's have a look to another market, uh, because uh, one often called market is the, the fueling of fuel cell vehicles, but uh, the much higher amount of hydrogen right now is used in refineries. Um, these are uh, several thousand tons a year right now, uh, uh, while uh, fueling of hydrogen for mobile applications is just starting. Um, are you also in contact uh, with uh, this industry, with the chemical industry, for example? Well, I think, uh, in, in principle, we are open to um, deliver our stacks to anyone who is interested, first of all. Um, with our uh, development focus, we will start with the small one first, so uh, 76 kilowatt hours input uh, as the maximum, and I think with that size, we're not really relevant for re refineries. Uh, but at the end of the day, we uh, believe, or I, I should say my engineers believe, that we start small first and then we scale up. And um, that's why we are, I mean, we are, we are here in Hanover to talk to everybody who's here and to understand where the market is leading, what the ideas are. Uh, but our first application will be with a small one. All right. Um, so is there any question from the audience? We still have a bit of time. If not, I have a last question for you, Mr. Kramer. Um, now, uh, it's the first time for you here on the fair in Hannover. Uh, what exhibits, you mentioned it shortly, uh, did you bring with you? What can uh, uh, the interested guests here from the audience see uh, following you to your booth? Well, you, you can see the models of the three uh, sizes I talked about. So the small, the medium, and the large Prometheus stack. Uh, that is what we have brought with us. And uh, we are really uh, satisfied and happy about how much interest um, it generates and that we as a startup company are also in the middle of the discussion that is going on here. Uh, and um, for us, it's important to understand what is really needed. Uh, also, things like how much pressure do you need when the uh, um, hydrogen leaves the stack, all these things are what we are discussing and happy to uh, talk to everyone who's interested and uh, yeah, come by. We are just around the corner here at D72-1. That's our booth next to Toyota. You might have seen them. Uh, happy to meet you there. All right. So um, then thanks you for the, uh, in the, the audience uh, for joining us here. And thank you, Mr. Kramer, for answering my questions. Um, yeah, and I think uh, uh, I really recommend uh, joining you to go to the booth. And I was also very surprised how small the 1.4 uh, megawatt uh, electrolyzer lo uh, looks, or not only looks, is indeed. <laughs> All right, thank you, Mr. Kramer. Okay, thank you very much.